today we're going to review how to solve linear equations. Now our ultimate goal when solving equations is to isolate the variable on one side of the equal sign. So in other words, we want to get the variable by itself by getting rid of all of the other numbers and operations that are on the variable side of the equal sign. Here's a great set of notes and also some terminology that would be very beneficial when working with solving equations. The biggest thing I want to say here is step one, stay equal. Whatever you do to one side of your equation, you must do the same operation to the other. And as long as you do that, you will be just fine. Pause for a second and write down these steps and these terms if needed. Now we're going to take a look at solving some one-step equations. So one-step equations, very simple. We're just trying to get that variable by itself by removing whatever is happening on the side of the equation with our variable. So if we notice here in our first example, we have x plus 5 equals 12. Well, to get the x by itself, I need to get rid of this plus 5. So getting rid of or removing a term, um, basically we want to do the opposite operation. So for example, if I have a positive 5 or I'm adding 5, if I subtract 5 from both sides of my equation, well now I have 5 minus 5. Well, plus 5 minus 5, this makes 0. Or we like to say cancels each other out. Okay? This leaves us with just x on the left hand side equals, and then we do 12 minus 5, which is 7. So now we have that for this equation, x is equal to 7. If we wanted to check to make sure that our answer is correct, we can simply take this 7, plug it back into our original equation, and see if both sides balance out. So let's give that a try here. 7 plus 5 equals 12, and 12 is equal to 12. So yes, this does check out. So the correct answer here is x equals 7. So whenever we have a plus some number, we're going to do the opposite or the inverse operation, which would be subtraction. So let's look at this one here where we're subtracting. Well, if we're getting a minus 2 and we want to remove that minus 2 to get m by itself, again, we're going to do the opposite, and the opposite of subtracting 2 is to add 2. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other, and this now leaves me with m equals 6 plus 2, which is 8. Again, I could plug my 8 back into here and go 8 minus 2 is 6. That is a true statement. Therefore, the correct answer is 8. Now, we look up here. We have 3y equals 9. Remember that 3y means 3 times y. And the opposite of multiplying is division. So, I'm going to come in and I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by the number 3. Now, we're not going to get zero here. We always say cancel each other out, but let's see why that happens. If we have three divided by three, that gives me one, okay? So three divided by three actually simplifies down to one, or just one y. However, we know when we write variables, if the number in front of that variable is a one, we just don't place it there. So I'm going to remove this one for now, but just know that Division, 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1, not 0. Okay, but we like the term cancel each other out because we know that anything times 1 just remains itself. And then over here on the right-hand side, we have 9 divided by 3, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. We could plug our 3 back in to make sure it works. We could say 3 times 3 equals 9. That is a true statement, so we know our answer is correct. Now down here at the bottom, we have this fraction. And a lot of people get really nervous with fractions. But remember, fraction is just division. So this just says x divided by 4 equals 7. We know the opposite of division is to multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by 4, or 4 over 1. Okay, it means the same thing. And I'm going to multiply this side by 4. So what this would give me here is 4x because we do 4 times x and 1 times 4. 4x over 4 equals 28. 4 divided by 4 is 1, where they cancel each other out, right? And this just leaves me with x equals 28. Now, a lot of people will just mark through the 4s right here in this step, 
okay? Because the opposite of div dividing by 4 and multiplying by 4 cancels each other out. It makes a 1. But I wanted you to see where these numbers come from and why it does simplify down just to our x. We're not actually going to multiply or, you know, we don't end up with a 4x, okay? These two are going to simplify down to a 1. Now we could again plug this back in, okay? 28 divided by 4 does equal 7, therefore our answer is correct. We also learned about the reciprocal in this module. Now reciprocal means the inverse of a fraction, okay? Inverse means opposite, okay? So what we're going to do here, if we want to find the reciprocal, is we're going to take our fraction and we're going to flip it. So for this one here, if I have three-fourths, the reciprocal is going to be four-thirds. Over here, I have negative five-thirds. Finding the reciprocal does not change the sign. It's still going to be a negative, but this time, instead of five on top and three on bottom, my denominator will become my numerator, and my numerator becomes my denominator. Now, we come down here, and we have the number two, and you say, yeah, but two is a whole number. It's not a fraction. Remember, any whole number can be made a fraction by giving it a denominator of one. Now, if I want to find the reciprocal of two over one, again, I'm going to flip it, and I would end up with one half. And last but not least, I have one fourth. Again, finding the reciprocal, my denominator becomes my numerator. My numerator becomes my denominator. Four over one is the same thing as four. Now we're gonna use our reciprocals when we're solving equations that have fractions as coefficients. So what do we do here? So let's look at this first equation. Okay, and we've got some steps up here. It says find the reciprocal, multiply both sides by the reciprocal, and then simplify. So I go, okay, negative two-thirds. Well, my reciprocal would then be negative three over two, right? So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by negative three over two. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to solve for x, right? I want to get this x by itself, and to do that, I've got to get rid of this multiplication of negative two-thirds. So by multiplying, I'm going to get my variable by itself. So let's take a look at the left side, okay? Negative three times negative two, and two times three, these cancel each other out, okay? They're the inverse of each other. A negative times a negative makes us a positive. It's a positive one. Again, it's just going to leave me with my variable x because these all simplify down to one, okay? On the right-hand side, we've got a whole number times a fraction. Remember, super simple with fractions. We can just make our whole number a fraction by giving it a denominator of one. And remember, when we multiply with fractions, we multiply straight across. So this is just going to be 4 times negative 3 over 1 times 2. Notice I didn't put the minus and the negative sign with both the 3 and the 2. If your fraction is negative, that only applies to one of the two numbers. doesn't matter which one you pick, okay, but it can only apply to one of those values. So now we just multiply. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and 1 times 2 is 2 and this will simplify down to negative six. All right, let's take a look at another one. So let's go down here. Six-fifths x equals 12. This means six-fifths times x equals 12. So we want to find our reciprocal, which we know is five over six. We're going to multiply both sides of our equation by that reciprocal. I'm going to turn this whole number into a fraction. On the left, I'm simply left with x. On the right, I'm going to do 12 times 5, which is 60, and 1 times 6, which is 6, and 60 divided by 6 is 10. All right, over here, again, multiplying both sides by the reciprocal, I have 3 fifths times x, so the opposite um, of multiplying by 3 fifths we're going to, is multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. Okay, so multiplying both sides by 5 over 3. 
again, going to make my whole number a fraction. These cancel each other out or simplify down to 1. Okay, We're just going to have 1x, or just x, equals 9 times 5, which is 45, and 1 times 3, which is 3, and 45 divided by 3 is 15. All right, let's take a look at this last one. Negative 7 halves times x equals 8. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 7 over 2, which is going to be negative 2 over 7. I'll make 8 a whole number by placing it over 1. We know that this simplifies down to just 1 or just x. I have 8 times negative 2, which is negative 16. And I have 1 times 7, which is 7. Notice this does not simplify further into a nice, pretty whole number. That's okay. okay. There are times where we may get a fraction for an, a value for x. Just leave it in this format, and you'll be just fine. I hope you found this video helpful. If you need additional assistance, please reach out to your instructor. Have a great day.